Welcome, Spartans, to Halo Book Club, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. Halo Book Club goes beyond the video games and covers Halo's extended media lore from the novels, short stories, comic books, and more. I am your host, Oren, and with me today is Aaron. Hi, guys. Welcome, Aaron. How are you today? I'm not too bad. I've played some Halo for the first time in a while. I have had a relaxing St. Patrick's Day weekend, just to reveal when this was recorded. Oh, yes, yes. I'm off work for a few days, so it's it's all good. It's all coming up, coming up Millhouse. Now, is there a large um, St. Patrick's Day celebration in Northern Ireland because it's Ireland? There is. It's it's pretty sizable. But it's not like Americanized like we've we've done it over here where everyone's Irish for the day. Well, our parades are a bit more low scale than what you guys have. We tend to have a lot of uh, flatbed trucks with people standing on them and stuff. And it's just not (laughs) quite as on the same scale as the Americans. But uh, it's usually busy enough. I try to avoid it, though, because after many years of bar work, I detest this holiday. With a burning, fiery passion, so I usually avoid it and stay at home. Okay, well, it's good that you had a relaxing, stress-free St. Patrick's Day experience. I I didn't really do anything. I just wore green to work and then went home. Like, I don't even remember what I did on Friday, really. I think I planned some some things with some friends for next weekend. That's the way to do it. Right, but today we are talking about a a short story. It's our last short story from the Fractures collection that came out in 2016, and it's the untitled story, the uh, the story at the end of the collection that just uh, appears. It's like an after credit scene in a Marvel movie. You don't really know what it's going to be, and it just is what it is. And uh, shout out to Lucas, who actually recorded this episode with me last week. Uh, but my audio was terrible, so we are here re-recording. Um, so, Lucas, thank you for giving us your time, and sorry that we are overwriting your existence by re-recording. It's just the nature of these things sometimes. But before we get started, welcome to the show. If you're new to the show, Halo Book Club is part of Evolve that hosts uh, all different types of Halo shows, Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, Builds with Blocks, HCS Pro Talk, Halo TV+, Plus, Halo Gear Guide, and Halo Headlines. You can learn more about each of those shows on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. If you're already a fan of the show, welcome back. Thank you for being here. We ask you to rate us and leave us a review. We appreciate all the feedback that we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of all of our shows. If I would like to take this moment to thank all of our patrons for their continued support. Thank you guys so, so much. All of your contributions help us to continue making content like this every single week. So give yourself a round of applause. Yay. If you're not subscribed, our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcasting soundtrack, and our latest reward, an exclusive podcast show, I Would Have Been Your Podcast. Uh, We're about five or six episodes deep into that, where we talk about uh, Patreon, uh, or sorry, patron um themed topics uh talk about other video games other things going on kind of just outside of video games get to learn a little bit more about us as as kind of just people and what we're interested in and uh, overall opinions here and there so if uh, if you want access to that you can subscribe to the appropriate tier and you can head over to patreon.com slash halo evolved to learn more And finally, we encourage our listeners to support Audible, where they can enjoy the growing collection of Halo novels all in one place, along with thousands of other novels, guidance, wellness programs, and more. You can use the URL audibletrial.com slash podcastevolve to learn more and start your free trial today. Now, Aaron, would you like to take us through the book club info as we dive into the untitled story? I certainly can. This is quite late, actually, because we don't have all the details. It is an untitled story. It is not called untitled story. It just does not have a title. Yes, and that's something. And that's something that Lucas actually didn't. I mean, I didn't really notice it either. But like, he was looking for untitled story, but like, couldn't find it because it it it's just called on. Like, it doesn't have a title. It is the untitled story. Yeah, it's it's basically just an epilogue to fractures. There's there's no details at all, and we don't have an author. I believe like that hasn't. I assume we'll find out later it was Frank O'Connor or someone. Yeah, we don't we otherwise don't know. It's not written anywhere in the in the novel. 
Yeah, I, I'd imagine fairly safe bets it's a Frank O'Connor thing or something. We'll find out in a few years. He just penned it or whatever. Makes sense. The publisher is Gallery Books. It's available in digital, audio, and physical formats. The Fractures was released on the 20th of September, 2016. Only a handful of years ago. That's That'll be nine years this year. That's... Or no... Gosh, that was a, no, not nine. Seven no, years, like seven years seven. this year. Yeah, still seven's long enough. Well, when you think about when, I mean, we're we're coming up on our nine year this May, and, and like a two months. Don't say that. We've only been doing this podcast for like two years. That's it. Oh, only two. We have such a fan base for for two years. Good for us. We're we're just really good at it. Yeah, we definitely haven't been doing this for like that long. Doesn't feel that long. Makes you wonder what we've been talking about for nine years. Is there really that much Halo? And the answer is yes. Sometimes, not at the minute, but sometimes. <laughs> the length of this is, I think the audio version is about 20 minutes, so I'm not 100% sure on the physical form, but 20 minutes, what are we thinking? It's about it's about 10 to 13 pages on an iPhone audio, or on an iPhone digital book. Because um, I, I read the story on my phone, because a lot of the, a lot of the books I have digitally, so then I don't have to carry the physical books and take up space in my tiny New York apartment. And it's easier for me to kind of go back and reference things and kind of quickly read stuff. So, yeah, it was about like fi- fifteen pages at most. That sounds fair enough. Uh, the story takes place after the events of Promises to Keep and reveals the fate of Born Stellar and Chant to Green. This is 10 to 50 years after Promises to Keep. The location is unknown, but we know from the story it is outside of the galaxy. The, the three characters are Born Stellar, Chanta Green, and their son, who doesn't get a name, I believe. No, just son. There's the perfect opportunity to make a Halo game where the Didact just shouts boy the entire time. <laughs> Shamelessly copy God of War. I think we go through the story, there's like there's not a big pile to it, so we when we join the characters, we don't know who they are. It's someone talking about their son, he's plowing a field with two oxen, they're on a planet, he's just being sort of he's contemplating life and chilling a little bit and proud of his son, and we slowly learn that the planet they're on, they're in like this fertile valley area. Uh, this is the first year his son's nine. This is the first year he's helped him to plant the crops. Then they, like, they're getting ready to pack up for the end of the day. The this character makes his way back to the house, set up on the cliff, and then we learn that it is. Wait, does he reveal that it's Chanter Green here, or just his wife? Uh, just his wife. I don't. I don't even think they say Chanter Green in the short story. I. I think it's you. I think you infer it's Chant to Green after you learn that it's Born Stellar at the end. He goes back to the house. They have a picnic up on the ridge. They're watching the sunset and the twilight. They sit under the stars. He basically says that his his love has always been the stars in the sky and his wife's love has always been the things that live around those stars. So they chose this planet because it has a really picturesque sort of sunset as the twin suns go behind a gas giant that this smaller planet orbits. They fall asleep up sort of on top of the hill. Before that happens, the sun asks for a story and he wants a story about the halo and you're like, oh, oh, how does this child know about a halo? It almost like, it was kind of weird reading the short story because like you, you, it really couldn't, it, it could have not been a halo story and then all of a sudden it, is like, can you talk about the Halos? And it's like, oh, yeah, this is a Halo short story. Like, it's in the Halo universe. Like, it was it was written, like, in such a way and keeping it vague and interesting that it really just could have been any type of sci-fi story, like, that, that didn't really pertain to the Halo IP. But then, like, the sun's just like, oh, here it is. Here's here's the relevance and the connection, like. The, that little bit where he's like, tell me a story of the Halo. And it was it just gave me flashbacks to the end of Mass Effect 3 when they're like, tell me a story about the Shepherd," And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Let's not drop this here. But this male character tells him a story about 
a warrior who fought his way to the Halo and defeated the last great enemy of their people. Again, pretty pretty vague. Yes, pretty vague. Like you, you're listening to it and you're going like, this is the fall of mendicant bias and the grave mind, but you don't know, like there's no sort of real details on it. It's all the end of uh, Silentium. Silentium? The Silentium or Primordium? Oh, Primordium, isn't it? No, it is Silentium. It's the end of Silentium, is it not? Because See, that's... I thought it was the end of Silentium, but Lucas was saying that it was the end of Primordium with the grave mind or the primordial. And it's when it's when Chakas uh was getting Well no, that is the very end. That is the end of Silentium because Chakas gets injured and becomes guilty spark and gets sent off to mind the halo. That's at the end of Silentium, even though he's narrating the primor- primordium? Oh no it is, yes, sorry. I am very confused then, yeah. It is I mean I know right. I we, we had the same conversation because it was like because I, I I thought it was the end of Silentium as well, but I mean th- those those books kind of just all blur together. Do you know what I'm getting confused with? It is the end of Silentium where the didact reveals what the primordial said to him before he killed him. That's where I'm getting confused. That's why I'm thinking of it being the end of Silentium. It's at the very end of that I think that he says what the primordial said to him. He doesn't reveal it before then, but yes, no, you are right. This is the sec- the end of the second book, so the halo gets di- the halo gets damaged and resized down to the smaller ring. All of that happens in that book, and Mendigant Bias is taken into custody. The whole the whole thing. So that's the story. The wife and child fall asleep. The character takes them, carries them back into the house, puts them to bed, lights a fire, and then he throws a cloak on and goes off for a walk up into the mountains. Yep. And he the, the the first clue that you figure out exactly who everyone is is as he talks about his walk up the mountains and he sort of like scuttles up the cliff paths and all and he arrives at his old like abandoned ship and he says the name the Audacity and immediately you're like, Oh fuck, I know exactly who this is. Yeah. As soon as they reveal that. So he boards the ship, he says they left the ship up in the mountains to sort of like fade away at a time and he walks away down into it and in like a console storage tank that opens up his old suit of armor's there and then the last thing he reveals is the name of the owner of the suit of armor is his name and it's born stellar makes eternal lasting and you're like there it is yeah this is the life that they have like set for themselves he there's a few good details in this um He talks about how the plan that the last of the Forerunners came to is that they would spread out among alien stars outside the galaxy so that they, like, would slowly die out over time. Which, obviously, they didn't want the Forerunner race to rebuild itself, even accidentally. But also, that's a bit fucked up that this... that their son's, like, going to die on this planet on his own because it doesn't sound like there's any other Forerunners here. Yeah, it's almost like, why have have a child if you're planning on driving your civilization into extinction yeah it's it's that's a little bit of a weird one i was like okay unless there are other forerunners on this planet and we just don't hear about them i can't remember at the end of promises to keep who all goes where and who stays in the audacity but i thought it was just the didact i think it was just the didact enchanted green that's why we don't really know the timeline because we know it's been at least 10 years because now they have a son but it was probably a little bit more than that to get like to find the planet, to settle down, to start a life. I feel like it's quite a bit more because his memory's quite fuzzy now. Like he he doesn't remember all the details of his life and things, and it's he says it's been quite some time ago. It could be hundreds of years for all we know. The the ten to fifty is just kind of a general generalization that Lucas and I came up with. A part of me wants to wonder is could this be like modern day time in the Halo universe? Like without their armor, I don't think they could live that long, but like I like the idea that Born Stellar is still out there and alive because it'd be a good time to drop a Didact back into Halo for some fun. Oh, that would confuse everybody. Ah fuck it'd be great crack. We'll go mad. We'll have two Didacts. <laughs> But it'll not confuse anyone because the after we get the other story, the other didact's going to be like computer hard light didact. So, you know, we'll have two very different looking guys. Oh, we can only hope. I can't wait for that book. The book's going to be crazy. Yeah, I'm always up for more Forerunner stuff. And to like get 
definitive answers on what happened to the Eurodidact would be great. I like this story. Like, it's it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. It's a nice epilogue, like you said. Yeah, I like the parallels with what the Forerunners have done now and what the ancient Forerunners did in the... Is it Path Couture? The ones that chased the uh, precursors back to their galaxy. Yeah, you, you know when the... The librarian flies to the other galaxy in the audacity and they have to find out what happened to the precursors and they find those like reverted forerunners. They're the ancient forerunners and they've gone back to like this primitive lifestyle and they're farming on this planet and all like it's the same thing again. Right. Those forerunners couldn't live with themselves and what they did, so they just went back to basics. And now we have the librarian or the life shaper in the didact doing the same thing again. Yeah, it's nice. It's a like you said, it's a good like little epilogue that kind of just puts a. It, it doesn't really put a bow because like you you still are curious what happens next, but you we don't really need anything. It just kind of says they kind of just do. This is what they're doing with their life, their their new life that they're they're living in a neighboring galaxy, far away from the craziness of the Milky Way galaxy. It's not a bad we shout. I'd love to know who wrote it someday. Now, we seem to get a lot of details out of, like, Halo history now, so it would be nice to know who put this together. I, I'm, I'm sure it's out there. It's, it sounds like it could be a, what'd you say, a Frankie O'Con- or O'Connor short story. You know, I, I doubt that um, Greg Bear wrote it, even though it has his characters. But I guess he, he could have, you know, in theory. Well, it could have. I'd say more likely at that rate of going than... Chloe, because she wrote the last sort of like other update. Oh, uh, maybe so. Well, or maybe whoever wrote Promises the Keep. That's that's really what it maybe should be. It could be that too. So well, I suppose we won't necessarily know. Uh, Promises to Keep's author was Christy Gold. Christy Golden, by the way. Just so we have that on the record. Although I'd imagine they would have given him given him the credit then. But oh well. If anyone ever figures it out, feel free to drop us an email and let us know. Uh, one other thing before we start wrapping this up is um, the cover art of uh, Halo Fractures is a cracked glass looking out on Installation 07. According to Halopedia, the, that, that like image is the viewport of the Audacity with the, like, of the point of view of Born Stellar looking out of, of the Audacity and seeing the ship. So like obviously that's not in the short story but like you can infer that when he like sits down in the ship at the end and he starts reminiscing and kind of feeling some remorse he can picture the halo on the other side of the viewport and kind of looking through the broken glass and the ring and kind of like what it symbolizes and all the trials and everything that he went through that's interesting i didn't know that that's why when like Halo Infinite was coming out and they were like, oh, it takes place on Installation 07 and like the image that we that kept popping up was the Fractures cover because that's like the only real documentation that we have prior to Halo Infinite's release of Installation 07. Hmm, that is interesting trivia to know and I've learned something new on this. Still learning new Halo stuff. Well, I think, does that wrap us for this? Any final thoughts before we bounce? The only final thought I'll say is that this now makes us like to date with all the published um, short stories, comic books, novels, and what have you. Um, we are going to be covering the Waypoint Chronicles that have been coming out. So I think we have two from uh, the last Halo Infinite seasons, uh, like the I think Winter Contingency or Winter Contingent, and then Noble Intention, or something like that. Whatever whatever the, those two are called, I forget their names. Um, but we'll be covering those two on future book clubs, and then, of course, as new novels and new things release. But I uh, just wanted our listeners to know that in the, next, in the coming months, we will be having less frequent Halo book clubs because we've covered everything. So chances are, if you, want, if you finish a piece, a piece of literature from the Halo archives... You can search our podcast feed or our website, and you can find our thoughts of that story and have a listen. What you're saying, Orin, is we're free. We're finally free. It's over. Pretty much. Like, we, we cannot take a break and not be guilty about it, you know? 
and we will be on top of everything for a change. There won't be anything we're trying to play catch up on because unless 343 dump a shit ton of novels on us, we're safe. Yeah, and it seems like they've been going at about two a year for the last couple of years, so... We are overdue another short story book. I'd like another one. I mean, we haven't gotten one. We had Tales from Slip Space. Did that come out after Fractures? I mean, it was it was comic books, but it was uh, an anthology series, so to speak. But yeah, I wouldn't mind another like Evolutions or Fractures collection. Um, I think he even mentioned this that like I think it would be great to have one of those that kind of highlights different point of views of like Infinite's campaign, or or just kind of helps diversify the banished like occupation and their goals and stuff throughout the galaxy and just, and then even the created and like what they're going through like you know did it completely die with cortana dying or are there other stories out there to kind of piece together like i feel like there's there's some material there that they could they could tap into yeah true tales from slip space was a month after this so it came out in october 2016 as a digital only version and then came out as a print version november 2016 so they were both of these were the one year. Yeah. And we haven't had anything since in the last seven years. So it's it's been a minute, and I feel like short stories are a good way to go. So I, I wouldn't mind some of that. Same. I know we've kind of had some lore here and there, like we had the fracture lore and stuff, but it's just not really hitting the same way. Well, yeah, yeah, like I said, we have the the Waypoint Chronicles, and we have two of those at, uh to date here at the uh, end of March. And yeah, who knows? It, like one, if those even get better, because they're kind of mediocre, and just kind of like, oh well, that was nice, and it just kind of like satisfied the lore appetite. But it's it's nothing like heart, like Midnight in the Heart of Myth- Mythlothian or Mona Lisa. Like those are like are dirt. Rest and cool. Yeah, like th- those are some just great stories um, to kind of just enjoy. Uh, Vertical Umbridge and Winter Contention. Those are the two uh, Waypoint Chronicles that we'll be covering next, and then we'll cover the two novels coming out later this year, Outcasts and Epitaph. So you have that to look on for the horizon, um, but we're otherwise otherwise done with uh, with the book clubs. It's nice. It's, it's good to be here. Well, great. Well, thank you for joining me, Aaron, and listeners. Thank you for joining us. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode of Evolved Shows on our website, evolvedhalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Facebook group, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, and other contact information. Once again, another shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys so much and for supporting the show and making this show possible. If you're not a patron, head over to patreon.com slash halopodcastevolved to learn more. And finally, if you want to leave us a voicemail about this episode or a previous episode, or if you know the author of the untitled story, let us know and give us a call at 205-EVOLVED, which is 205-386-5833. And with that, I've been your host, Orrin, and until next time, Evolved. Evolved. Evolved.